G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. Oh, I'm so happy with this thing. Some of you may have noticed, and some of you might be noticing right now, when I stand near it, it kind of jiggles. But also, some of you noticed that at the end of the last episode, when seeing this from Steve's perspective, Steve being my PC that records the time lapses, that this whole thing kind of kinked sideways. That was just a little bit of desync. That was just Steve's perspective being a bit distorted. On the host's PC side, it was fine. As you can see here, it's all still just working normally. There's, there's nothing to worry about, thankfully. So, with that out of the way, <laughs> it's time to actually get this thing built to a level where I can use it. And to be able to use it, I need to have more cargo space, and I need to have a connector to hook up to the base, and I need to have a cockpit on it. I kind of have an idea in my head of how this might work out. What I want to have is an industrial cockpit that allows me to see down where the drills are when I'm in first person. So that's going to need to be fairly low down, probably down around at this level. And given the orientation of the base, probably on the right hand side of the drill rig thing. But again, towards the rear. Then I also want to have a fairly large amount of cargo capacity, probably hanging from around where those batteries are, potentially getting four large cargo containers on the back and four on the front, which gives me a fairly decent capacity for something that's small grid. That's eight large cargo containers. Sure, compared to a large grid thing, it's just eight small cargo containers, but still, it's a pretty big amount. And in theory, because of the way I've set up these rails, I can just keep expanding that outward and downward until I get to ice level. So if I really wanted to, I could make it bigger but then I'm not sure how well the wheels would hold up under that sort of stress. So that may not be <laughs> the best thing to do. Probably the first thing to place is these large cargo containers because they're going to dictate where a lot of other stuff goes, including where the, uh, where the cockpit can actually fit in. What I'd like to do, I think, is have it so that the large port is upward. Ah. <laughs> I'm just at one of those funny angles where it doesn't quite go the way I think it's going to go. Uh, large port upwards, maybe, yeah, offset from there, large port inwards so that it can, if I flip this around, these two can be joined by a conveyor frame, then, ooh, do I want to put a conveyor frame in this level as well, kind of separate them all out so that if I want to do any struts to support it, I can actually pass them through the cargo containers, that'd be kind of cool. Let's do that. The next thing I've got to figure out is the connector. I would ideally like this to hook up to a connector that's just mounted square on the base. So that'd be at this height. Could I get away with that height if the connector is set off here? Off here like this. I think... I think there's a chance that would line up and that would allow a connection. I'm going to take that chance because then it becomes really easy to hook up to this because all I need to do is no don't press backspace <laughs> all I need to do is put these little tubes in here and then all these cargo containers are connected up to that connector I'm going to match that arrangement of connect of can 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 too many things starting with C yeah yeah I'm going to match that I'm going to match that arrangement of cargo containers at the back to the spot at the front here. There we go. There's our eight large cargo containers. And now i just got to figure out how I want to do this cockpit setup. Because with the cockpit setup, hopefully that's going to allow some of the piping from these medium cargos in the middle to get to the end without being... without appearing extremely flimsy. Alrighty, so what I want to be able to do is walk from some catwalk on the base straight onto a little platform that has the cockpit. So probably starting back here, have a little gateway, some platform, and then the cockpit right in front of it. Uh, just trying to think of how I can set up the scaffolding to get a feel of where I want this to be without setting up too much and getting in my own way. 
I deliberately placed these cargo containers so that I can bring a line of blocks down from here. A line of armor blocks down. So maybe I'll start with one out here. Oh, actually. Should I use the eye beam? Maybe I use the eye beam here. Okay, so we've got our beam running down, down to here. Then I'll. And I was thinking I'd try and use a bit of armor block here, just because it's keeps it something different. Uh, and along here, and we should be able to put our cockpit around this point. I haven't really looked at exactly where I'm going to put this, but I'd like to have the ability to enter this from side, so it needs to be placed up higher than this. So if it's up at that height, I need a few blocks further forward. Maybe this far? It's hard to know with these cockpit placements. I always find it a bit more challenging than other blocks. Because the... What? Why you do this to me, game? That's not fair. Oh. How far back is this going to take me? <laughs> Your session has ended. You're the host! Hope this bug isn't back again. And now if you're wondering why I have so many different shots in the time lapse, this is going to be why. As unfortunately, the spectator cam doesn't remain static in between loads for a secondary player. Okay, I'm not too far back. This is actually not too bad at all. I'll wait for Steve and then I'll get back to building. Okie dokie, so industrial cockpit. Let's try there. Actually, uh, no, I feel like it needs to be closer. Uh, hang on. In my head, I was imagining that I needed to have some way to refill my bottles on this, but I don't really. I just need to stick a vent on the back of these two ports or even the port on top, and that'll be fine. These barred windows, I'm hopeful, will end up looking like a bit of scaffolding for small grid. Much better than using a build state, I think, if I start placing these down. And that'll sort of be my catwalk that you can walk onto. I'll put some fences around it. Because, uh, conveniently with the barred window, I'll be able to use like a slope and then a square piece. That's a bit of a nice cage effect, I think. But, of course, I need a different component to what I'm carrying. Probably about time for me to get some O2 anyway. Alright, so the barred windows, I think placing them this way is going to look best. And then we can have some bits going along the back under there. Try and keep them all in the same orientation and that's going to be tricky because I bet I'm going to forget and mess some of these up at some point. I don't remember how I placed these ones here. And I can't seem to get my grinder to highlight just that block. <laughs> oh no. I think I might end up having to weld these up just so that I can uh, grind them off again if they're the wrong way around. Drat. Drat, drat, drat. Yeah, I should be able to walk on and off because it's only a half block height, half small block height difference between the two levels. And I kind of like that. And I'll bring down a few more beams, definitely one on the other side at the same position so that it looks nicely supported. These beam blocks are so useful for industrial builds like this and making them look nice. It makes a huge, huge difference. I'm torn as to whether I've done that right. Hopefully that little chunk missing will look better once these cargo containers are welded up. The reason I went with that chunk is just... I always find that going out further than the cargo containers tends to look just that bit more chunky than I like. Oh... That'd be kind of cool. It's just thinking if I can figure out a way to make it so that I could put some basic controls for the tram on here that would allow me to control it with button presses or at least control the winch with button presses from the outside so I don't always have to be in the cockpit. Uh, that would be kind of cool. I'm not sure if these things are going to need something else added to them to make them feel a bit more robust. But I'm hopeful with how I placed them, at least on this side. I think I might have messed them up on the other side. Yeah, I did. Dang it. Um, I was about to say, I'm hopeful with how I placed these that I can then put some of the new armor plate on there. 
and use the warning uh, texture, the warning skin, like this. Hang on, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. There's the half light armor half panel. Yeah. So I was thinking if I place warning texture on this across the top, it'll give it that extra bit of thickness so that it won't just look like is Splitzy supporting the engineer by chicken wire? That sort of thing. I think that'll be a nice touch. I knew I was going to mess these things up a fair bit. <laughs> They're a bit awkward. And I I need to be so careful. I almost think it might be worthwhile um, welding some of them up as I go. Uh, what else do I want to put over this side? I guess if I am going to... Oh, I know what I can put over this side. I can put a an O2H2 gen, which means I can connect it up to the cockpit and allow myself to be properly piped up. And I can, or potentially two O2H2 gens and an engine so that even if this thing were to get stuck out in the middle of the ice, if I end up drilling that far, I've got a way to get some extra power and I can make power in situ while I'm going, which would be kind of nice. It also gives me another purpose for expanding out this catwalk area for want of a better term okay let's let's weld up a couple of these so that i whenever i'm unsure as to which way i've oriented them i can check and i still can't weld onto these they don't like me let's try this without area interaction and see if i can get it that is a resounding no it didn't make a difference also i placed all of these wrong yeah, I think this is going to be the look that I was hoping for. I think this is going to achieve what I wanted. I just hope I could figure out a way to make the piping look interesting. I find that that's a bit of a challenge with small grids sometimes, is keeping the piping interesting without just having to curve it everywhere, because the little conveyors can look interesting, but they can also look very repetitive. That was daft, Splitzy. Why would you not just... Ah, uh, nuts. I'm going to have to think about how to make that look good now. Just realise that these I-beams don't line up with the beam that supports the cockpit here. Uh, maybe... Maybe I have to change up how I do this. Need some steel plate. I think I might get rid of that central support thing that I've currently got for the I-beam. Uh, I mean for the cockpit. So this will be a block lower, but I should be able to wrap it around and then join onto the cockpit over the side here. Like that. I think that'll look good. And then I can do a second line here. Once I can work out which keys to press kind of twisted myself around and then just a beam slope and then I'll put a square block on the end of that row instead of that being a slope there we go and put a block in that'll hopefully make the cockpit look a bit supported I'll likely bring some extra supports down something to hook up to the roof but I just don't want to put anything in the way there yet my idea with doing bits and pieces of this as I go is Hopefully, it'll give me a clearer idea of where I want more detail, where I want more interest added. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, I can weld up these barred windows. I can't get at the plate that's on the front of them. Oh, I got one. I might need to have a grid welder to get at this. <laughs> Something that has a bigger area of effect. Oh dear. Oh well. That'll be alright. I'll make it work. I am regretting the orientation I put these cargo containers in. When I originally put them that way, I imagined piping off the bottom or top. Uh, it would have been really handy if I just had a straight pipe that I could have just shoved in from the end there, but I didn't do it that way, so I'm stuck. I just lay it out, and then I try and use some other things as supports on top of it. That could work. Just making sure that this is an attachment point on the side before I do this. 
and grind out that middle piece. Weld up that corner piece before I won't be able to get to it. And then... Ta-da! I can now, I guess, just weld up the cargo containers, the connector, build the connector on the base, weld up the cockpit, and we can give this a proper test run. That's That shouldn't take me too long. Okay, that's weird. These are easier to weld from this side. These are easier to weld from this side. I am so confused by that. Also, I made a, an access here that's much quicker than using the switch back stairs. I have a reason why I'm wanting to get this functional but not pretty before using it. And that reason relates to something that I posted on Twitter this week. A few people recently have suggested that I add in a bunch of scaffolding blocks. And I was tempted. Because this does look pretty hideous with these refineries and all this stuff around the place, but the idea of having no jetpack was not to add extra mods that I need for scaffolding. The idea was so that I would build things like the liftsy. And since I'm down here with lots and lots and lots of power, at least once this drill is operational, I'm thinking instead of the liftsy as it is at the main base, I'm going to build something that is more of a hoverboard. So a remote controllable ship that I can use to fly around things like this and not need to build scaffolding at all anymore. Because then I can get to whatever position I need, I can then go back to controlling it, move it around again. But the reason I hadn't done that to this point was the power consumption of something like that. It's going to use a lot of power to operate something like that long term in 1.9G. Because it's going to need a lot of batteries and it's going to end up fairly heavy. I probably don't want to bring too many materials on it because that's just going to add to more weight. But that's kind of the idea I've got in my head. Once I've got this thing bringing back truckloads of ice or gondola loads of ice, it's going to be easy for me to have lots and lots of power here. So I can afford to have something that flies, something that can potentially be quickly recharged or a pair of them, one charging, one ready to go if I make a design that I actually like. I wouldn't, shouldn't make a pair until then. That'd be a bad idea. There we go, and depressurize. Cool. Uh, in theory, it's technically ready. I need to build the connector for it to hook up to, so it can offload. And then, once I've started mining with it seriously, I'm also going to need to build some cargo containers onto the base. Uh, but the connector first. So the connector needs to be central and it needs to come down two blocks below that beam. I'm just trying to think of how to connect it to that beam in an interesting way. Do I use more beam? Is this too much beam? I go like that and then put conveyor junction there. Or even, actually, let's put a small cargo container here. And then connector in front of that. Like so. Also, while I'm thinking about it... I so rarely do this, and I really need to do it more often. Let's put a couple of armor blocks here. And then... A camera. So we have a reversing docking camera. That would be nice. Okay. Uh, theoretically ready? Time to get rid of the scaffolding then. Okay. Uh, slightly terrified by this, but I, th I, th I'm I can't think of what else I need to do. I guess I could do one or more of these extra cargo containers since I do have easy access to it right now. It does feel like it does feel like maybe that would be a good idea. Won't worry about the ones at the front just yet. Ooh, actually, is that so smart? If 
I weld up too many of these ones at the rear, they're going to fill up and they're going to be a lot heavier than the front. Maybe I'll just leave it. That could have ended up with it all toppling over. Let's have a bit of a look at it now. We can see it clearly. And I think the support for the cockpit might work out. It may need a bit of an adjustment to make it look reasonable. Perhaps I'll need to have some sort of beam running along the back that I can connect to. And something else running along the front as well. So, we've got from the connector one large block, two large blocks. And it'll be one large block lower. So, in theory, that would mean coming off here. I'm probably going to replace these stairs with something better. But I figure I need it for now. It needs to go at rail height. Even if I get this wrong, it's probably best I put something here <laughs> for once I do get into the cockpit and I come back here. I'm going to want to be able to get out. There you go. That, in theory, should be around the right spot. Hopefully close enough that I can safely get out again. And then let's get on board. Before my power runs out. Okay, I can get in the cockpit. Better I can get in it from here. Can I then grind that off just to give myself a bit more clearance? No. Can't reach. Alright. I'm in. And from this seat, I should be able to see the drills hit the ice. Definitely going to need more lights on this thing. Uh, controls. First up, we want... Handbrake on and off. And... Probably vent on and off for the moment. Then the simple thing which will be toggling the hinges on and off so they'll get more or less torque. Then a toggle on off for the rotors and a reverse for the rotors. Those are the main... Oh, and we need a drill grip. Okay. Here goes everything. Drills. On. A little bit of jiggle. That's possibly okay. Reverse the rotors. Turn them on. Oh yeah. Now there was something someone pointed out to me, which is ideally you'd have this chain running over, say, a roller of some sort. Ooh, it's working, it's working. Let's get that ice. Uh, ideally, you'd have it running over a roller or something so that it always drops at the same exact height. Because uh, otherwise, what's going to happen with its current situation is it's going to rub against the edge of the hole. As the coil gets smaller, the hinges are going to come toward me. And I don't think that's going to be as big an issue as it might be. And I would like to test in creative running it over a wheel on a suspension before I do it in this because I have a reasonable suspicion that's going to be explosive. <laughs> Alright, how are we looking for ice? We got medium cargo container full. Wait, uh, large cargo containers. Nothing. Alright, let's go down a bit deeper. This is so cool. <laughs> it's really working. I don't think I'm going to get as deep as I can go before I run out of storage space. Apparently, definitely not before I run out of light. Yep. Uh, are my drills starting to fill? Yes, they are. Okay. So the drills are filling, which means it's time to switch them off, reverse my rotors, and bring them back up. Oh, the other control I need on my hotbar is my camera. My reversing camera. Switch it back up. And we'll stop right there. I might even put a camera looking down over the top of the drills. Yes, we need a camera that faces down in front of it so I can see the drill going down into the earth and get a better perspective of it from there. Now, the bit we didn't test is driving the tram. Here goes everything. Uh... One by one suspensions. Fiddle with them all? I think I might have. 
should be reverse. Yep, here we go. Look at that. <laughs> oh, man. I love this. Yep, connector works. And locked. And hop out of cockpit. Back onto here, and then... Oh dear. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, gonna have to build a little ramp onto there. Or maybe I'll... Ooh, actually, that's probably a good idea. Maybe I'll lift... Lift the grating one level. Keep the cockpit at the same height. But lift the grating one level higher than it is currently. Because I think that'll allow me to work a lot better in that area. With the supports under the cockpit and things like that. Yeah. Now I need to build a conveyor from there up to the top so I can actually start processing this stuff and filling the tanks on the panini. Oh, we're actually doing it. <laughs> we're doing it in the most ridiculous way I think I've ever mined. Oh, oh man. Too cool. Too cool. I'm so happy with this thing. To get away with this many subgrids is just heaven for me. Uh, right. I wanted water, that's right. Oh yes, we are piped up. And because of my unplanned break that got a lot longer than I meant to be from Survival Impossible, I've actually had this idea rattling around in my head for this miner for a long, long time. And I hadn't settled on a design until quite recently, but this feels like something that's been an age in the making and I am so happy to see it functional even if it's still not complete but it, it works now I can turn on my O2H2 gens and we should start being able to get some stuff into play into various places so we have hydrogen tanks which are both off let's turn them on those are the ones on the panini and we are starting to fill how much ice have we got a fairly decent amount like that was 30 odd thousand or something. Oh, I'm so happy. Energy. So very, low. very happy by this. Uh, definitely need some lights though. Definitely need lights. Earlier my plan had been to get the basic functionality of the Nautilus gondola finished. And so that I could get a little bit of ice and then use that for hydrogen engines to power up the base and power up a sled for me to fly on so that I can then build the rest of this thing. Which means I now need somewhere to build that little sled device. And I think given the size of this area that's going to be overhanging the Panini, somewhere up there should be where it would be connected up. So I guess I can build it up there? Assuming I've got decent conveyor access because if I don't then building it somewhere down on the ground is going to make a lot more sense and actually yeah let's build it down on the ground and we can just build its hookup up the top eventually because <laughs> I'm slightly concerned that I'm going to fall and it didn't really have the easiest of access built up there yet Plus, having this thing will probably allow me to place down a lot of this stuff much more simply than what I was about to do, which was lean over the edge. Where to build a temporary rotor slash hinge that's actually hooked up to this place. Ooh, uh, and engine. Need to turn these on. They are full. They are outputting 5 megawatts. Batteries. Okay. We're getting charged into the batteries. Don't think <laughs> I'm going to get... I'll probably get maybe... I'm guessing 20 minutes, half an hour of runtime out of these... Out of the supply of hydrogen at the moment. If that. In fact, hydrogen tanks are going down fairly rapidly now. Okay. That's, that's okay though. That's okay. Uh, I could... If I'm already out of ice, I could go get another load of ice. I am. Alright, let's... We'll do one more load of ice. 
And then I'll start building this skid sled thingamajiggy. Back before I do my next load of ice. Let's drop these drills down to close to ground height so I can add a couple of lights to them. Because I really do think I need to be able to see what's going on down there. Hoping if I just gently rest them down. I'll push over and I'll be able to access all the way around the drill piece. Like that. Yeah. Let's go have a look. I think this thing deserves a couple of rotating lights on it. Not dill, drill. I'll need to add these to my drill group so they get switched on and off with the drills. So if the drills are off, these are off. Uh, I also don't like them spinning this fast. I quite like my warning lights being nice and slow like this. Especially as I'm going to get some flickering with this in the time lapse anyway. So perhaps this will reduce it a little bit. Something like that'll do. Make them slightly different colours so that it's still obvious when the spinny ones are going. These need to have a bigger radius and a lower intensity. Winch drills get those in the group as well now. Ow! Yeah, I was afraid of that. I got in the cockpit from the wrong spot. I need to get from into the cockpit from the gondola itself. I hadn't realised this until just a couple of moments ago, but it's actually a safety device. Because if I have it that way, I'll always pop back out onto the gondola, rather than what I just did then, which was pop out and fall. So instead of getting in from this catwalk, I need to walk out here and then get in. Because then when I get out, I get out back onto safe terrain. Okay, we reverse and we retract. It's quite a lot of swing. <laughs> this is why I need that camera over top as well, so I can see exactly where I'm about to drill. I reckon that'll do. Let's turn the drills on. Spinny lights come on. And stand. Kind of like that this whole thing jiggles a bit. <laughs> it gives it a much more industrial feel. I definitely need some sort of inventory status bar thing around here. Uh, in fact, if... Ooh, do I know any scripts? I can't think of any off the top of my head that I can put up on this LCD in front of me. But I probably... Oh, automatic LCDs would probably do it. I might spend some time fiddling with that and I'll put it on my little LCD in front of me, the one that I'm staring at that's got my horizon. Because inventory fill is a lot more important to me right now. Am I getting organics from the stone? Oh, that's weird. I'm getting so many organics right now. All right, just one little extension further and then we can roll back. You can see why I need the extra cargo containers on this thing. It's going to need a lot more capacity to actually use the full length of this drill without it just being a waste. Okay, now the drills will be filling. I don't want them to fill. I'm worried that if I fill the drills, I'm going to end up with a situation where I can't retract them. Which would be bad. Also, uh, the glitchy spinny lights getting stuck there. That's not ideal. That is kind of cool. That view. That contraption right near your head. <laughs> what a place to work. Handbrake off. First camera. Ooh, I need to adjust the magnetism of that. That's a bit strong. Uh, connector. What's it set to? 0 0.0150. Let's change it to 0 0.0050. And do the same to the other one as well. Hopefully that will be a little less aggressive. Okie dokie, where's going to be a good spot to build off? Probably just off the side of this one, actually. First order of business, let there be light. So I'm going to want to see what I'm doing. Hinge. Lock. Switch out to small head. And now I have my build platform. So, this thing... This thing that I want to build will need to have... It probably needs to have a cockpit, even though I'm primarily going to fly it to get around on foot. 
But the reason I was thinking of building it with a cockpit is then it's going to be much quicker to move it when I need to move it because I can just hop in the cockpit, move it, rather than shift K, remote control, r remote control, fly it, move it. But then I also think it'd be nice to have to do that because then I can make the thing smaller and a cockpit makes it all much larger. So I'm a little bit torn. Let's have a bit of a, let's do a little bit of a layout and then think from there. The batteries are going to form the base of this thing because we want to have at least two large batteries on it. Need to have a remote control and a gyroscope. Place them down because they're usually the things I forget. I should probably build these batteries now actually because I do have the hydrogen engines running and when they stop running I can just go and collect a little bit more ice. And so these should accumulate a bit of extra charge while I'm building this up. I'm hoping with this I can get away with a single directional thruster in each orientation. Because I'd like to not have to build too much onto this. And the lesser weight I can get away with, the better. And my rough guess at the moment is four lifting thrusters. So that'll be a total of eight thrusters on this. And let's start with one going out that way. One going out that way. And then I kind of want to do one of these on each side. Actually, let's let's do this just in case I end up tilting this thing. We'll go two each direction. We'll make the whole thing a lot safer, I think. Plus symmetry. There we go. And then we just need some lift. So I was thinking go one, two, three, four. And then Energy low. back to just these pointing each way. If I feel like I wanted an extra two, I could just put them doubled like this. Does add a fair bit of extra weight, adding ex every extra thruster. Uh, could make a fifth. And that's kind of all this strictly needs for flight. Uh, since I'm going to put a seat on it, I don't actually need to have an antenna, which will save on some power. But what I'm going to build on top of this is a bit of a platform for me to walk around on, because if that spreads out a decent distance without getting too big I'll be able to walk and do more things at once without having to then move it again to the next spot it's the hope anyway I love how quickly I reversed my decision on just having one thruster in each direction once I realized I couldn't make it symmetrical with that <laughs> in mind <laughs> like oh can't be symmetrical oh uh mm, maybe I will have some more then yeah 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 Ugh, splitsy. Try making up your mind before you speak next time. Turn off all the thrusters, because they're using power. And we're going a little bit crazy, because they're on a subgrid. Uh, actually, speaking of power, have my engines burned through all of the fuel yet? Yes. Alright, let's do another little quick run with the gondola while... It's still night. And I went up the wrong level. I will tidy all this up and I will put proper railings and stuff in. But I kind of want to design this thing first. Alright, disconnect. Let's roll out. See if I can get myself over the top of that same hole. It does move a fair bit, doesn't it? <laughs> Even in the direction it's not supposed to. Oh, I forgot to get the stone out. I need to get that out next time. Oh, and I'm already full. Uh, okay. Oh, wait. The the stone should have been pulled in by the refineries, shouldn't it? I think it would have been alright. I do have the wheels set to move very slowly, uh, but have a lot of power. Oh, that was much more gentle. I've, that's much better. So I should be safe fully accelerating, but I, because I've got a max speed of only 40 kilometers an hour. Ooh, I forgot to get in the cockpit from the correct position. I got lucky then. Let's grab all this organic matter. And I might just throw it away, because I don't need all of it. Doop -de doo Goodbye. One of the reasons I've gone for this shape that I have is that this is now five blocks wide. I probably should have actually made it only four blocks wide. Because then I would have been able to fit through a large grid single block space. Uh, but at least this is 
close enough to that so I should be able to comfortably fit in most places if I need to switch the orientation to this direction so that I can squeeze in and then have a nice long walking long part to walk on to do the rest of the stuff from the cockpit and then have a area out here where I stand yeah I will dang it I kind of liked the thought of not having one but equally it makes so much sense to have one so if I place the cockpit there I can, in theory, build a nice little walking area here. But I could also do something that I just never do, which is use the cockpit to place down blocks. I just find it so awkward. <laughs> That's why I never use it. Uh, but there is that functionality, and perhaps this is the time to start trying to take advantage of it. Plus, the cockpit is the same size as a seat, so I didn't save myself any space. Oh, I wouldn't have saved any space by going to a seat. Thought I'd give it a little bit of a ramp so that I can get some extra height sometimes. And thought it might look interesting. Maybe? Probably do the same on the back, actually, if I can manage to figure out how to grind those bits off. Yeah. I kind of like the lopsidedness of it. This will be quite the cool little build platform, I think. Quite useful. Oh, no! No! Oh, <laughs> you irritating thing. I can't actually get at the any of these barred windows. Except for these three. I can't weld them. I'm going to need to set up a grid welder just to get these welded up. Ooh, that, that, that smarts. That's annoying. I don't like that. And the cockpit has a bit of cargo storage, so I can put some basic components and things that I'll need in there. If I'm going up to fly up to build something. But... The other thing I need is some way to lock it to the ground. Oh. No. I need a way to charge it. I think. Probably means a connector on the bottom. This has gotten a lot bigger than it was intended to be, but... I guess we'll find out if that's actually a problem and whether I need to do some improvements to the design in the future. Okay, uh, I guess it's time to try this thing out. Get rid of those. Pop in. Not from that side, though. Well, that is going to be too long for this. I guess that sort of works in an ugly kind of way. Uh, oh, actually, I can use the windows. I can use the windows instead of plate. Oh yeah, I can actually jump up to that. Perfect. That works surprisingly well. Turn the thrusters on. Switch lock. Toggle on off. I don't think there's anything else I need. There we go. Flies okay. It's got... 20 minute run time with how much power in the batteries? 21 minutes with about a third. So it's got an hour's run time at full charge. That's not too bad. When I think about it, like most of my recordings sit between the two to four hour mark. So if I had a pair of these, I'd probably get a full recording session out of them before they both needed to be recharged but with just one hopefully I'd be able to get it recharged in fact I think for something like this we need to have a group because uh, I don't have another better name at the moment I'm just going to call it this for now if you guys can come up with a better name for this lopsided monstrosity let me know uh, let's put these on recharge So we go lock and recharge. And now I'm out here. <laughs> what I think I'm going to have to do with its current parking location is try and get a way to get into this cockpit from the ground, fly it over to the ground, get out, get back in on this platform, and then I can go and build some stuff. I feel like that's going to be the best way to go. But for now, I need to wait for these batteries to charge up so that I can use this thing. Which means I should probably go and do another drill run 
with my Nautilus Gondola Magica. Ow! Ooh, I'm glad that didn't hurt much more than that. Now remember, don't get in. Walk over here. Get in. Down we go! Kind of wish that rotors had a clockwise, anti-clockwise option instead of just reverse, like pistons have an extend retract. It'd be really quite handy. Can't quite see enough of what the drill's doing. I kind of like the position of the cockpit anyway. I feel like if I had it further back, it'd be a bit too awkward. But I would like to be able to see further down, so I'm going to need that overhead camera. I am very, very happy with how this is turning out. Next time, I'm going to use my new goblin skateboard hoverboard despite having a cockpit not really a hoverboard thing to do the rest of the design around this thing and hopefully get it finished up because it, it works now I can drill and it's worked repeatedly that's been the real test is that this has worked more than once I haven't had to rely like I haven't just used it once and then it's broken this thing is proving to be reliable so next time I will build this thing hopefully finish off the design, get it mostly welded up, or entirely welded up would be really nice, and then we can get on to more work on the base. So there's all that, and plenty more to come, and I will see you then.